Greater Young Zion Baptist Church's Sunday morning broadcasts are now coming to you one hour earlier. Tune in at 7.30 a.m. every Sunday, only on Fox 54. Oh, somebody give God a hand clap of praise in here. Uh, Sometimes we got to go back old school. Ain't nothing wrong with that, is it? Huh? Y'all remember these songs? Somebody said, what?
Good morning, GYZ. Good morning. I said, good morning, GYZ. Good morning. For those who do not know me, my name is Eugene Donald Washington III, and I am one of the associate ministers here. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The Bible also says over the book of 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then shall I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. We need to start trusting in God. We need to start calling on God. Can I get an amen? Let's take it a step further. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. I said, all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy neighbor and wild to thy bones. We need to start reading the Bible. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? We will now have our church covenant. By what common and gracious experience do we enter into spiritual covenant relations with God and each other? What is our obligation towards this, our own church? What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted to us? What obligation do we assume towards each other? We engage, therefore, to walk by the Holy Spirit in Christian love. For the sake of our homes and our loved ones, what glorious task do we humbly assume? We engage, therefore, to maintain family and secret devotion to engage directly. For the sake of the unsaved, we pledge to what manner of life and conversation? To walk to the world, to be just not faithful not engagement, and to not our To avoid all tattling, backbiting, excessive anger, and to be zealous in our fit. In what manner should the Christian church look upon that which could bring mentally and bodily injury. Since we are brothers and sisters in the Lord, by what fraternal behavior are we to strengthen each other and to adorn the teaching of our Savior? What are we to do when we move away from the community of our church, which makes it somewhat impossible to attend regularly? Let us pray. Father God, once again, we just come before you to say thank you. You woke us up covered in clothes in our right mind. You brought us to the house of God that we may receive a word 
from heaven. Now, Father God, I ask that you cancel each and every assignment that the enemy has deployed against us. Seen and unseen danger may rise up against us. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this entire church and members. For this is our prayer, I ask in Christ Jesus' name. And everyone that loves the Lord, say amen. 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 We'll now have another selection from our choir. remember this song.
Amen. You ain't got to stop praising him. He's good and he's worthy of all. Come on. He's worthy. Just think about what he did on this week. You ain't got to stop praising him. He's worthy. Ain't he worthy? Amen. Amen. I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Woo. Have mercy. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Johnny Elam, and I'm one of the outstanding deacons here at GYZ. Amen. And I'm here to do the welcome for you this morning. Do we have any first-time visitors here in the sanctuary, whether it be here in the sanctuary or online? If we have any first-time visitors, will you please stand? Amen. And if we have first-time visitors here online, please check our uh, text in the box on the number on the screen. If you're online, just text visitor, please. We love to know who's fellowshipping with us here at GYZ. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. You don't have to do nothing, brother. We just want to recognize you. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to see you guys here today worshiping with GYZ. We thank God for you. And we realize you could have went any other place, but because of God, you are here today, and we welcome you here today. We thank God for you. GYZ, come on, let's give him a hand. Let's give, show him some love here this morning. Come on, GYZ. We got to show him some real love in here this morning. Amen. 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 And as I go to my seat, I have seen visitors turn into membership. Now, if our trustees to come forward, I ask that you prepare your hearts to do one of the most spiritual things that you can, and that is give. Good morning, Great Young Zion. Good morning, Great Now comes one of the better times of the morning time to give. The word said, will a man rob God? How do you rob God? You rob God in tithing and you rob him in an offering. You honor a curse, the whole nation of you, because you're robbing God. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse, that I make food in my house, and test me this day, thus said the Lord Almighty, and see if I won't open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out so many blessings, we won't have room enough to receive it. What I'd like for everyone to do now, I'd like for the two outside pews to stand and face the wall, the two inside pews to stand and face each other. Then the overflow will come down with the assistance of the ushers. May we all stand.
If you believe that, you ought to stand to your feet. If you believe that. Come on, GYC. That's not how. That's not how. That's not how. Score. Three days later. Three days later. Rolls a king. That's not how. That's not how. Glory. Three days later. Rolls a king. That's not how. That's not how. Jesus, I love you. Here we go. I love you, Jesus. Uh. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Has anybody been omitted? Signify by raising your hands and the trustees will come to you. May we all stand for prayer. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, once again, we just come before you to say thank you. You gave us the opportunity to regain and, and to gain an increase this week. Now, Father God, we ask that you accept what we give, be it big or small. We ask that you use it for the uplifting and building of your kingdom on this side of glory. We also ask, Father God, that you bless those who had a desire but not the means, as well as those who had the means and gave. Father, we thank you for everything that we go through. Because I can see your hand more and more and more on our lives. So, Father God, we just want to tell you thank you. And we ask that you continuously be with us. Continuously mold us, shape us into what you want us to be. For this is my prayer for us in Christ Jesus' name. And everybody that loved the Lord, say amen. 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 We'll have another selection from our choir. And after that, the next voice that you will hear will be from our beloved pastor. Hear ye him.
let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, uh, Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength, and Lord, you are indeed my redeemer. This we ask in the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Let us all say together, amen. amen. Praise God for our choir. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a little more volume. A little more volume. God bless you. God bless you. Ah, man. First Sunday in November. Yes, sir. Celebrating 120 years. GYZ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This, this theme for the entire month is uh, how do you handle what's handling you? <laughs> how do you handle what handling you? Amen. Amen. Let's jump right into the word of God on today. You can be seated. The scripture's already been read and we're just going to jump right into it on today. And how do you handle the unexpected changes in life? How do you handle the unexpected changes in life? Amen? If it never happens to you, keep living. <laughs> We're all going to go through some things that are unexpected in our life. And you know what? You got to handle it. Or it'll wind up handling you. Amen? Amen? So how do you handle that kind of thing, man? I, and I think no better uh, way to start this uh, teaching on the day is to start with the life of David because David gave us some powerful instructions on how to really do that. It's amazing because uh, David wrote 73 Psalms out of all the Psalms that are in the scripture. And the 73 Psalms, if you ever studied those Psalms, you're going to find out when you study those Psalms that those Psalms David was dealing with a whole lot of stuff. He was dealing with a whole lot of stuff. There was always, uh, he was stressed out about something. There was always something intense that he was dealing with. You know, he was always in a, in a situation of life. And it's amazing with that, when you kind of look at that, you know, because that's really what every believer will go through in this life. If you try to live godly in an ungodly world, then you might as well expect these things are going to happen. Amen? In fact, Jesus talked about it. He talked about it with his disciples in John 16 and 33. And he talked about it with his disciples. And he said, look, man, he said, these things have I spoken to you that in me that you might have peace. But in this world, you shall have what? What is tribulation? Tribulation is trouble you can't handle. Oh my God, amen. Some trouble we can manage and some trouble, hey man, we just cannot handle. But be of good cheer, for I have what? Over the kind of world. Paul talks about it as well. He talks about the same thing in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 and 12. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 12, he says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And what is persecution? It's pressure. It is pressure in this life. Amen? And then you know what? James talked about it. James said, hey man. And James was writing to a church in persecution. He said, my brethren, count it all joy. Not if you fall. But when you fall into what? Diverse temptation. And the word diverse in the scripture means various or a variety of temptations in your life. And literally, it means polka dot. Yeah, literally, literally. The word means polka dot in, in the Hebrew, in the Greek. And what is polka dot? You know, I don't like polka dots. People, 
<laughs> People wear them, you know, I don't like to do a polka dot. You ever know what a polka dot? You got a dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here. You know, and that's how trouble gets sometimes. Trouble becomes polka dotted. It don't just be one thing, it is your health. And then you're, you're polka dot. Then you know what? Then not only your health, it's your relationship. Not only your relationship, trouble on your job. Not only trouble on your job, you got trouble in your family. Not only trouble in your family, you got trouble with your friends. You got trouble with your enemies. You got trouble with church folk. You got trouble with the folk you work with. Anybody ever had some polka dotted trouble? Oh <laughs> and then Peter comes back and says, hey man, hey, chill out. Chill out. Beloved, think it's not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is going to try you. And you acting like something strange done happened to you. You cannot live godly in an ungodly world without you having some of these things happen to you. And it's amazing because in the Psalms, the Psalm 56 is the Psalm you look at the uh, highlight on your, on, your, on your scriptures. When you look at your scriptures, I want you to look at your scriptures. Look at the highlight on your scriptures. Uh, what I mean by the highlight, if you got your Bible and you open your Bible, right at the top before they go into the scripture, they give you kind of like a background of when this scripture was really written. And it was written at the time when David was in Gath. Gath was a Philistine city. Amen. It was a Philistine city. And you really can't get into that unless you know the history of what I'm talking about. Amen. So David is in Gath. You remember David? Y'all remember David? Y'all remember David? Amen. David was the one that was chosen to succeed Saul. And uh, you know what? And David went to the battlefield one day and he saw this giant, you know, by the name of Goliath. And uh, you know what? And they said anybody who could defeat Goliath, you know, that he would do it. And the giant was tall, man. He was tall. Some writers say he was almost nine feet tall. But he was tall, man. And David, you know what David did? Took a slingshot, killed Goliath. Amen. But here's the problem. After David did that, David was also a musician. He knew how to play. And Saul invited David to come into the palace with him. And whenever Saul got in a rage or got in a temperament, you know, you always do that when you're under a lot of pressure, David would come and play. And that would just soothe Saul's spirit. But what did, here's what happened. What ticked Saul off was the women. Because see, the women start singing. That Saul done slain his thousands, but David done slain his ten thousands. And that made David more important than Saul. And Saul got jealous and all of a sudden, he turned against David. And when he turned against David, you know what, David, David, David uh, saw a son by the name of Jonathan. The Bible said him and David was close and Jonathan said, David, David, man, you better book. <laughs> because my daddy, it's going to kill you. And then David went on the run. Went on the run. And when you go to, uh, what happened is, and I'm going to show you what happened. We're talking about, you know, unexpected changes in your life. When you go through what I call desperate time, desperate times will happen. So David got an unexpected change. He was invited to the palace. He was invited to play for the king. He was a national hero. But all of a sudden, he changed from a hero to a zero. And David had to book. Amen. He was in a desperate situation. He had to go. And so in this particular particular uh, Psalm 56, he began to write about David. Now, you got to understand that there are three Psalms that was related to this incident. There was Psalm 56, Psalm 34, and Psalm 70. Now, you can read it when you get home, okay? Psalm 56 is the one we need to deal with because Psalm 56 deals with what David was dealing with at that time. Psalm 34 deals with what David dealt with after that time. So in Psalm 56, we're going to find out how do you deal when you're in desperate time? How do we deal when there's an unexpected change have come in your life? Do I have any desperate folk in here today? 
God. Now, listen, listen, listen. Boy, it made this a desperate time, Pastor. How you come up with the fact that it was a desperate time? Well, you got to remember, David is in what? Gath. Gath is a Philistine city. David had to be desperate. He had to be desperate. He had to be scared because he ran to the city of the hometown of Goliath. Like you can imagine running to the city of the hometown of where you killed their hero in front of thousands of witnesses. Amen. David was desperate. Let me listen. Let me go a little bit deeper with this desperate. Go back to um, um, uh, go back to Psalm 21. And I want you to see something about this. I want you to see what I'm trying to get you to understand. See, David, when he first ran, he ran to a place called Nob. And when he got to the place called Nob, he asked them, did they have any weapons? And when they found out, he said, the only weapon we got here is the sword of Goliath. And they wind up giving David that sword that belonged to Goliath. Now watch this now. He is so desperate, he is so afraid of Saul that he runs to the city, an enemy city, gasped the hometown of Saul, carrying Saul's sword. Boy, you got to be desperate. Oh my God, amen. Now I done shot Barry. But I ain't got no place to go, so I'm running to Barry's house. And I shot Barry with his own gun, so I'm coming back to Barry's house. And I got his gun with me. And I'm saying, Barry, you need to help me. And what wind up, they arrested uh, 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 David. And if you read the story even more, uh, David tried to act like he was crazy. He started spitting all over himself. <laughs> and all that stuff, and, and the king of Gaff said, we ain't buying that. Locked him up. They wind up arresting him. He was in a desperate time. Psalm 56 tells us how do you react when you're in a desperate period of your life. David writes this song and gives us instructions Oh, how do you deal when you're feeling desperate? When it looks like nothing ain't working. It look like everything is just frustrating. Anybody look like whatever I'm trying to handle in my life is really handling me. Oh my God, amen. <laughs> Are y'all ready for this today? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here's, I'm going to give you three little simple things to do. Three little simple things to do. And this is what I've learned to do when I'm in desperate situations in my life. I've been in those situations. If you hadn't been there, live on, you're going to get there, you know, in this life. Amen. Here's the first thing that David did is to cry aloud. When you're living in a desperate time, when you're in a desperate time in your life, you got to cry to the Lord. If you're in a desperate time in your life, you got two choices to make. You can either depend on God or detour from God. When you're in a desperate time, that's the choices you got to make. A lot of people, what, they detour from God. But when you're in a desperate time, you say, Lord, I'm dependent on you. I'm dependent on you. When you're in a desperate time, there's no time to be cute. There's no time to be... We be proper. Ain't no time to worry about how you looking. Ain't no time to worry about who hear you. Ain't no time to worry about where you at. Hey, man, you need to cry aloud. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. Go to Psalm 56. Psalm 56, number four. Listen to what David said. God, I will praise this word. In God, I will put my trust. In God, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Look at verse number 10. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> he said, God, I'm going to praise your word. And God, I'm going to praise your word. Look at verse number 11. David is praying, God. In God, I'm putting my trust. And I will not be afraid. What man can do unto me. Oh, my God. Boy, when you're in desperate time, it's time to worship. When you're in desperate time, it's time to call on him. When you're in desperate time, it's time to say, Father, I scratch my hands to you because there is no other help I know. When you're in desperate time, you got to say, God, where can I go? But to the Lord, when you're in desperate time, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for what's coming my help. It's time to get your praise on. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. God, I'm in desperate times. I'm in desperate time. I ain't got time to play. I ain't got time to be formal. I'm going to tell you just like it is. I need your help. I need it right now. I got a 911 call unto you. You got to come through for me. I'm looking for something to happen. I'm waiting on my breakthrough. Show yourself strong in my life. David said, I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you. You got to cry loud. It's amazing because this psalm is so, it's so powerful, man, in the New Testament. There were scriptures that alluded to this psalm. Hebrews 13 and 6 was relevant of 4 and 10. And so let's just say, you need to boldly say. <laughs> Look at that trouble. Look at that knee. Look at what the doctor's saying. Look at your situation. Know that your God is greater. Know there's nothing too hard for him. Know he can do impossible. No, 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 no. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is marvelous. I ain't coming here believing nothing but you. Boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I know he's the king. I know he can kill me. I know I'm in prison. I know what they can do with me. But they don't know I got the Lord with me. And I will not be afraid what anybody can do with me. <laughs> oh my God. Romans 8 31. <laughs> so what shall we say to these things? If God be for us. That's why when folk mess with me, I don't be concerned about me. I'm concerned about them. Because if God be for me, then who can ever be against me? Amen? God told Israel, no weapon. He said, no weapon. He didn't say they would not be formed. He said they will not prosper. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look what Jesus said in John 8. Jesus said, I want y'all to know this. I am the light of the world. And he that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of his life. You know what that means? God will let you see what other folk can't see. Uh, 
safety. I wish I had about five real saints in here. God will help you see what other folk cannot see. Listen, listen, listen. God has let you see yourself employed while you unemployed. And you ain't even had a job interview yet. God will let you see yourself retired and you still on the job. God will let yourself see yourself being married and you ain't even had a date yet. I wish I had somebody. Is there anybody other than me in here today can praise God because you can see what other folk cannot see. Man, you got to see yourself walking while you still crippled. Anybody, you got to see yourself up while you still down. God will do that for you. Oh my God, amen. Oh my God. They were saying the time I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. But listen, 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 I want you to hold that scripture right there. You got to cry aloud. You got to cry out loud. David kept saying over and over, I'm trusting you. He kept saying over and over, I'm trusting you. He kept saying, no, you don't notice he didn't say it one time. He just said, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. See, that's, I call that a faith praise. See, a faith praise is a praise you get to him before he gives you the blessing. If, if you wait till after you get the blessing, that ain't nothing but gratitude. But if you can praise him before the blessing get here, honey, that ain't nothing but faith. Has anybody got a faith praise? Anybody know that he what not, not that the Lord know he can, but you know the Lord know he will, and you just go praise him in advance? Is anybody other than me Know that the Lord's credit is good with you. That he done come through so many times in your life that you can praise him in advance. You can thank him in advance. You can speak it in advance. Get on your feet right now. Give God what belongs to him right now. Go ahead and thank him. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. I can weep. I just got to weep for the night. But my joy is going to come in the morning. I'm going to praise him right now while I got a chance. Praise him for children that already graduated. And they ain't even been accepted yet. Praise him for the wedding you're going to go through. Praise him for the things that are going to do in your life. God will let you be able to do it in advance. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Do business with the Lord. And he will bless you if you mean business. God would do business if you mean business. I'm expecting him to bless me. I said, I expect him to bless me. I don't care what it is. I expect him to bless me. I don't care what it is. I know I got to go with that. I got to go with that. But see, sometimes you got to stop having a pity party. Sometimes. You need to throw yourself a problem-solving banquet. <laughs> I'm coming out this pity party. I got a problem-solving banquet. I'm going to sit at that table to know that my problem is going to get solved. I'm going to sit at that table because I'm sitting with the healer. I'm sitting with the one that sits on the circle of the earth. I'm sitting with the one that can make ways out of no way. I'm, Sitting with the one that can see all power in his hand. 
you cry aloud. Cry aloud. David. He cried aloud. When you were in desperate times. Amen. You cry aloud. You get it. You know what? <laughs> Marvin Gaye said, make you want to holler. And throw up. <laughs> Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. David teaches us in desperate times to cry aloud. He teaches us in desperate times to find our comfort in his presence. You know, Jesus told them, he said, look, I'm not going to move the tribulation from you. But in me, you're going to have your peace. He never said, I'm going to move the tribulation so you can have the peace. He said, you're going to have the tribulation. But in me, you're going to have your peace. David says, whenever I am afraid, Look at verse 3. <laughs> let me put it, let me put it in Ebonics. <laughs> Whenever I'm scared. <laughs> I will trust in thee. Look at verse 4. In God will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Now sometimes, sometimes people, they sound like a cliche when people tell you, you just need to trust God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Hey, you, your knee hurting. You just got to trust God. Yes, but let me ask you a question. How do you trust God? I'm going to take that word trust and I'm going to do an acrostic with you. This is how I learned how to trust Him. Now, the T in trust means to take God at his word. That's where you start trusting right there. Lord, I'm just going to take you at your word. Because I know what you said. You are the God that healed all of my diseases. You are the God that healed all my infirmities. I'm taking you at your word. Now, why do you need to take God at his word, Barry? Why do you need to take God at his word? Number 23, Numbers 23. Look at that, look at it. There it is. Because God is not a man. <laughs> that he should lie. And neither the son of man. That he would ever have to repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I'm going to take you at your word. That's that T. That's that big T. Because not only you're taking God at his word to solve your problem, you're taking God at his word to do what you need to do until he solves it. The Lord, I'm, I'm going through a financial struggle, but I tell you what, God, I'm going to still not mind not my own things, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, but I'm going to mind the things of others, and I'm still going to condescend to men who are of low estate. So even though I don't have what I want for my life, I have enough to be able to share with someone else, so I'm going to continue to obey your word while I'm trusting your word to deliver me. Does that make sense? That makes sense? 
Lord, 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 I'm struggling. I'm really struggling with some things right now. But you told me to not forsake the assembling of myself together. So I got to get these crutches. I got these crutches. I don't, don't feel like going, but I know I need to be here. I need to be here because you told me I need to be here. And I know if I obey you, you got to give me the script to be able to do it. And so therefore, Lord, I am obeying your word while I'm waiting on your word. Are y'all hearing this? You got to do what he's telling you to do. Why are you waiting on him to do something you want him to do? Oh my God, somebody ought to shout on that. I'm doing what he tells me to do. Until I can get what he wants me to do. Because I take you at your word. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Now the aura, the aura, the aura, the aura means I'm going to rest in your promises. I'm going to rest on your promises. I mean, because I, I know I ain't going to be up here worried about this all night long. I'm going to get my rest because I'm believing your promises. Some things, God, you want me to do and some things you want me to watch you do it. And so, Lord, I don't mind standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord because you God. I, I say you God. And I know you're going to act like God. And I believe in you to act like God. I ain't worried about what's going on around me. I'm resting on your promises. Look at Romans 11, 33. Oh, the depth of his riches. Both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Oh my God. He already knows what I'm going through. But here, I want to do what he says. You notice the, the time, I wish I had time to teach it. You know. Look at the order here. The riches of God is in his wisdom. And the knowledge of God. What does that mean? It means wisdom is how he wants you to behave. And if you behave the way he wants you to behave, then you get knowledge about who he really is. And that's why, that's why you become a bad man. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? While the other folk crying and other folk weeping and other folk don't know what's going on, they don't know you don't to him before and you already know what he does. That's why the old folk used to say, you can't make me doubt him. You know why? Because I know too much about him. How many of you done tried him? And you know he all right. I wish I had somebody. Amen. That's what I'm telling you to try him. Because I done tried him. And I know he's all right. Oh my God. Amen. I ain't got a so-so God. I got a no-so God. I know he's all right. Oh my God. Oh Lord T. I'm going to take him at his word. All right. I'm going to rest in his promises. You. I'm going to understand that I cannot predict what the outcome of what he's going to do. <laughs> Tim, I've learned to do that over the years of my life. You know, it's not, some of you are depressed because you're trying to predict the outcome. I understand, Lord, I got to depend on the outcome of whatever you want to do. And that's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is saying when it says to trust in the Lord, rely on the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he would do what? Okay. 
Word direct your path means to cut a path. Cut a path means there is no path. Because you don't never know what God is going to do. I had a lady get upset with me. She said, you know, I asked you to pray for my mama. Because I didn't want my mama to die, Reverend. And I asked you to pray that the Lord would move the cancer. And you prayed for her. And she still, the cancer came back. And she still died. That's why I don't believe in these preachers. I said, sweetheart, can you understand something here? That Hebrews 9, 27 is appointed unto man to die. Now, everybody got an appointed time. All of us in here, we got a set time. Amen. The only thing we know is how we come. But nobody knows how they leave. Some sickness is for your healing, while other sickness is just your exit. So when he doesn't heal a particular disease, it isn't that God is not God. God said you got to die from something. And that sickness was just your exit. Amen? And, and, and so... You know, she called me right now. She said, I never thought about it that way. Oh. And she said, Rev, you're all right. <laughs> I said, I'm glad you took me off the chain gang because you put me on the chain. <laughs> it's amazing, man. It's amazing. It's amazing. Sometimes you got to understand. The outcome. Some things God would take from us and some things we live with. There are a whole lot of things I've asked the Lord to move. God said, I'm not moving that. God said, no, you got to live with this. Amen. I had an eye doctor appointment with my ophthalmologist and had my eye appointment and my doctors told me, he said, Pastor Blunt, we don't know what you're doing, but your eyes have not changed. So you got, you know, I said, well, doctor, praise the Lord. He said, Wow, why are you praising him so happy? I said, anytime you tell me something other than I need to be saving some money up for a dog. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. <laughs> it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Because to understand that God knows the outcome. He's the outcome. You trust God for the outcome. You got to understand. It. That's how you trust him. Amen. The S is to realize the sovereignty of God. It means that God got everything under control. Amen. Look what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 32 and 17. He said, oh Lord, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. And you made it by your great power yes, and by your stretched out arm. Yes, and I come to the conclusion, Lord, that there is nothing yes, too hard. But well, somebody ought to drop their kickstand right there. I'm just going to praise God right here. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. Can we get like a two second commercial break on the message? We ain't got to wait till it's over. Let's go ahead and praise him now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man, we're going to praise him right now. Oh, man, it's amazing. It's amazing, amen. That's how you trust him. You take him at his word. That's how you trust him. You rest in his promises. That's how you trust him. Because you understand that he controls the outcome. And that the outcome is dependent on him. That's how you trust him. Because you know he's sovereign. He got it all under control. Don't worry that God ain't shocked at nothing happening to you. He already know what has happened. 
He already know what is happening. He already know what's going to happen. He's always in control. Now here's the last T. I'm going to leave you alone. I hope I didn't bore you today. Here's the last T. Here's the last T. Here's the last T. The last T means testimony. You need to have your own testimony and you need to be strengthened by the testimony of other people. You trust God by not only your own testimony, you trust God when people who trusted him won't keep their mouth shut. <laughs> Amen. Because I don't know, but I have been strengthened by the testimony I've seen of other folk. I was in Indiana this week. I was in Indiana last week. I'm sorry I miss you guys, but I was in Indiana. And I had the privilege of eating dinner with an 89-year-old preacher and an 85-year-old preacher. Both of them still driving. One of them still pastoring. And I'm just sitting at the table with them, man, just sitting and eating with them and just sharing with them and just listening to their testimony about the goodness of God. About some stuff they went through. Because, see, sometimes people can tell you stuff. And they, 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 you said, wait a minute, I went through that same thing or I'm going through it. And you're able to tell somebody how you got it. Because, see, you ought to be like some folks said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just could keep it to myself. And they begin to talk about miracles, about miracles. My, when doctors tell you things are going to happen to you, and the old man began to talk about a miracle that happened in his life. And I'm listening to his testimony. And I'm telling this old man that back in 1985, when I went to the doctor, my hip was double swollen. I couldn't put on pants. And they did a bone scan, and they determined. And my mother told me this story, Zena, when I was 18 months old. And I was living in the foster home, and my foster father didn't want me there. And he took me out the crib, and he threw me up against the wall. And he shattered my right hip. Midwives and mothers, you know, people, I didn't go to the doctor until I was in college. Because we couldn't afford going to doctors. We depended on grandmama, big mama, people in the community. They knew how to heal almost anything. And they took and they wrapped that hip, man. They wrapped it up. But the problem was is that the bone was never set back properly. So the hip never healed properly. And when they did the bone scan, they found that the bone was, was in a place that the doctors told me, said, no way in the world you should even be walking on that hip. And then he told me in 1989, in about six months, we're going to have to replace that hip. Because that, 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 where that bone is set there, you're not going to be able to walk. And I listened to the doctor, but I thank God there's another healer. Because in 2022, I'm still walking on that hill. Somebody ought to have a miracle story in your life that you can say that it was nobody but the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That anybody other than me, come on, don't fool me now, got at least one or two things on your resume that you know in your heart that it was nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody but the Lord made that happen. And every now and then, you go through your desperate periods, go back and revive your testimony. Your testimony can uplift you. Your testimony can give you a whole new outlook. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's my testimony that let me remember what he been to remind him of what he is. And I don't know about you, but that's what helped you in your life. That's how you trust God. That's how you trust him. Take him at his word. Rest on his promises. Understand that the outcome is dependent on him. Know that he's sovereign. Amen. 
Sometimes he's quiet because the teacher is quiet when you test him. And sometimes you don't worry about it. He's still there. He's still there. And know that your testimony will do it. Hey, that helped anybody today? That helped anybody? This is the, what do you do when you're going through desperate times? I cry aloud. What do you do through desperate times? I am comforted by his presence. But here's the third thing. What do you do in, tes- in desperate times? Is that God will help you conquer your enemies. Help me do it. Hmm. Let's go to this scripture, Psalms. He says, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. Wow. For this I know, for God is with me. God is for me. He said, in God will I praise his word. And in the Lord will I praise his word. They're going to praise him. For in God have I put my trust, and I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. How did you conquer your enemies, man? Can I give you three Ps? When you got a known enemy in your life, the first thing you do in conquering him is pray for him. See, praying for an enemy doesn't mean you're going to change him. Praying for an enemy is to keep the enemy from changing you. So I'm praying for you because I'm looking out for me. Because I don't want your feelings, my feelings about you to control how I behave. Now, I would not give you that kind of power over me. So number one, you got to pray for your enemies. And Jesus made that perfectly clear. He said, pray for them that despitefully use you. You pray for your enemy. But I know you don't like me. That don't disturb me. I just pray for you. I know you don't, you're lying on me. I ain't going to confront you. I just pray for you. I spend more time praying for people. Man, I ain't got time for that. I got other things I got to do. My destiny is not in your hands. My destiny is in the God's hands. Amen. Do you realize I can live without you liking me? Do you realize I ain't lost the appetite because you I still got food on my table? Amen. Come, come on, people. We just make we we make the enemy important by reacting to the enemy. Some things I don't say nothing about because what, what, what you saying ain't really that important to me. And I learned that. You know where I learned that from? I learned that from Sweet Daddy. <laughs> I learned that from Sweet Daddy on Good Time. We had a, he had a girlfriend named Savannah Morgan. And, and, and Sweet Daddy, Sweet Daddy had J.J., do a portrait of Savannah. And when Savannah saw that portrait, she wasn't happy with it. And she started laying him out. And he said this, really, really got me, he said this, man, he said this, he said, your lips are moving, honey, but you ain't saying nothing. And that's how I feel when I hear folk lie on me or maybe say something unflattering about me. Baby, your lips are moving. But you ain't saying nothing. And what I mean by that, you ain't said nothing I need to respond to. <laughs> you got to learn just pray about some stuff. Amen. Here's the second thing you got to do. You got to deal with your enemy because God going to test you. He's going to test you. 
You got to learn how to participate in the ministry that God may give you for them. Here are always people that don't like you. God will use you to help them. You can't walk around and tell me I ain't doing nothing for them. I ain't doing nothing for them. Amen. Not doing nothing. Not doing nothing. I understand he got diabetes. He may be taking some medicine for that. But he sure ain't taking nothing for his nerve. He got the nerve to ask me. And God trying to tell you to know this ain't about him. It's just about you. You got to learn how to participate in the ministry that God may give you to somebody that cannot stand your guts. And Jesus made it perfectly clear that if your enemy hunger, feed them. If your enemy naked, clothe them. <laughs> how you conquer your enemies, you pray for them. How you your enemies, you participate. How do you conquer your enemies? Is to know that God will protect you. The reason why I ain't got to fight you, because God will fight for me. <laughs> and if you fight, God won't fight for you. This is what he said, dear beloved, avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written that vengeance is mine. I will repay, Amen. said the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, man. That's good enough for me right there. <laughs> That's good enough for me. You know that God's going to pray. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us. Now that word if is a bad translation. It really means since. It means since God is for us then who can be against us? Because see, if I'm following him and you coming after me, you got to go through him to even get to me. And so this is the thing that you have to really do. As I close this message from today, My biggest problem, Barry, it's uh, God has trained me well and disciplined me well to deal with enemies. Sometimes the enemies can be in your own house. Jesus said your greatest enemies could be in your own household. They could be right in your own house. The people who are supposed to love you don't love you. You got to be able to deal with all of that, man. You got to deal with, with real brothers who don't act like brothers or real sisters who don't act like sisters. Hey, man, people who hurt you more than folk that don't know you hurt you. But that is not my greatest enemy. My greatest enemy is a three-letter word. It's my ego. It's my ego. There's three things about our ego. People say, I ain't got an ego problem. Yes, you are. You're most, a lot of you, you got ego problems. We got a lot of people believe that I am what I have. That's the ego problem. You think because you got this, that that makes you better than me. And people are quick to tell you, well, you're just, in my, you're just not on my level. <laughs> you country is a syrup sandwich. As though country is bad. I mean, the most real people I ever met in my life are country free. I felt more comfortable at a country house that I felt in some of these uppity sedity houses. <laughs> and Jesus has made it clear 
that life does not consist in the abundance of things that you have. But a lot of y'all are so stupid to believe that you better because of what you have. That's the ego problem. That's an ego problem, amen? But I'm going to tell you about me. I'm grateful for whatever God gives me. I mean, I'm not going, I'm not going to complain when the Lord blesses me. I ain't going to feel bad about it either. Amen? Because I didn't complain when I was walking. So I sure ain't going to complain that the Lord let me ride. I didn't complain when I was in the sticks. And I sure ain't complain when I'm in some bricks. I didn't complain when they had the box breeze fans in the window. And I sure ain't complain now that I got central air conditioning. But I'm still who I am. When I go down to my hometown, and I appreciate a lot of my friends. Man, we can't call you Bruce no more, man. You... You, you Reverend Blunt now, they call you, man call me Bruce. That's my name, we all grew up together. I'm still the same Bruce, amen? So don't, don't get that twisted. Don't get it twisted that you are what you do. We want everybody to know what we do because we feel like we are what we do. Amen? <laughs> So you, you got to look up to me because see, I'm Reverend, Reverend Dr. Archbishop Blunt. <laughs> and you just Reverend. You just a Reverend. People get confused but they are what they do. But you know what I found out a long time ago? That, you know, <laughs> whatever I do, there are people who do what I cannot do that makes me look good at what I do. If I didn't have the people to do what I could not do, then I wouldn't be getting the credit for some stuff I do. There's always somebody else making you look good. Come on, come on, girl. come on, help me out. I was in Indiana telling me, maybe watch your program. Pastor Blunt, you're doing a wonderful job. Your media ministry is doing a wonderful job. You really got them well trained. They don't even realize anything. <laughs> they do a marvelous job, but I ain't trained none of them. Because if I'd have trained them, they wouldn't be doing nothing. <laughs> We'd have been still looking at our, watch, our phones. But they look good because of what they do. I don't negotiate with television stations about our television program. I watched our program this morning. And Zena, excellent job. It's always excellent. Our program's quality is always excellent. But I don't talk to a Channel 54. Do I, Zena? No, I'm talking to talk, talk, Channel 54. I don't negotiate nothing. Zena just called me and said, Pastor, Pastor can you? And she's very respectful. She always asks me, are you with this? And she know that almost 100% of the time, unless we broke. <laughs> I'm going to say, Zena, Zena knows best. You got to understand that you ain't what you do. Here's the last thing, and I'm going to leave you with this. You are not what people think about you. <laughs> you're not as good as some folk think you are and you're not as bad as some folk think you are there's going to be always somebody who think more of you than you know you really are oh, you're just so anointed they don't really know how crazy you are
They don't really know that you're some savages short of a picnic. Because you've only been around them about 10 minutes. You can fake 10 minutes. I say this to you as I leave you on today, how to, to handle what handling you. This is my prayer for every one of you in here today. In desperate situation, you learn how to rely on the promises of God. In desperate situation, you learn to be reassured by the presence of God. In desperate situation, you learn from the bottom of your heart, you learn how to find your rest in the power of God. Give God praise and worship. Hallelujah. If the Lord bless you today, won't you tell him you thank him? Won't you let the Lord know you thank him on today? Amen. Oh, my God, man. Oh, my God. God is so wonderful, man. He is so wonderful. He is so wonderful. Amen. Who is so wonderful? Whatever I am in desperate times, I always remind myself, I will trust. Say it like you mean it. I will trust in the Lord. Lord and I, I'm going to trust Him. How long? Until I. Lord, I will trust. Say it like you mean, put a little rock in it. And I'm gonna stay on the back.
Lord, and I'm going to treat it revive until I, I die. You're in our building on today. You're in our building on the day, and you don't know this Jesus who can wash away our sins, who can make us whole again. If you don't know this Jesus who can save you right now. If there's some reason you're in this house today and you don't have a church home, you are saved, but you need to be in the Bible believing, Bible teaching ministry. All I can say that that is a commitment of greater your life. Not a perfect church because we don't have perfect people. But we do talk about a perfect God. And if you're in here tonight, today, and you need a church home, a place to call your home. Every baby need a home. And every Christian needs one too. This is the time when you just walk out the aisle and just walk down the aisle. God, I just want to be in your family. I don't know where I would be in my life if I didn't have a family. And none of you would know where you'd have been if you didn't have a family. So how do you think that you're going to grow and mature spiritually without a family? You're already standing, that means you're halfway there. That means the devil is, you push them off your lap. Let's come on down and walk down. And be a part of the family. I don't care where you are, in overflow areas. Just come on, walk down. If you're scared, don't be scared. Don't be scared. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're not here to embarrass you, we're here to embrace you. For those of you who are listening, uh, those of people who are listening to our live stream, uh, people who are listening to us by YouTube, Facebook, we want you to know that you are part of our extended family. And you can be connected with this church, or you, we can connect you with Jesus. You can call us at 706-724-1720. You can leave a message at our office and we'll have someone call you. Or we have Texas. You want to join, you can text that number and text join and someone will get right in contact with you. We got people who are ready to serve you. If you need prayer, just say, Dop, text that number and say prayer. And we'll have someone, one of my staff members would call you. And they do it expeditiously. We got people sitting on ready to pray with you and pray for you. You just want to accept Jesus Christ. Just say, hey man, I accept Christ. And we got people who will talk to you about your walk with him. Help you to learn more about him. At Greater Yen Zion, we're grateful for those who are here and we're grateful for those who are part of us, but not physically present. For whatever that reason may be, we love you just the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. You're going to walk back further to your car. It's further walk to walk out than it is to walk down. Amen. Amen. And the thing about it, man, why we take the time to extend invitations to you because people are dying so unexpectedly, so, 
so much is happening. And you never know when your number or when you might have missed your last opportunity. I sent our church family to pray for one of my dear families in Richmond, Indiana, the Gibson family. The Gibson family has been like family to me all the years I've traveled to, to Indiana and we fellowship together every time we're there. I've been in their homes and in fact, before I left Indiana on that Monday, that Sunday, we had our lunch together. His beautiful and wonderful wife always just lively and friendly. Gave me a big hug before I left. Pastor Blunt, we look forward to seeing you again. Right now, she is fighting for her life. Husband find her, she had a brain aneurysm. And just like that. And there's some of us who are walking in today will be rolled in somebody's church or somebody's facility next week. That's why you need to make the decision today while you got time. Make the decision today while you're here. For some people it is an opportunity and some people it's a warning. We take the time because some people are running out of time. Make the decision today. Make the decision today Why you're here. You don't need to be scared now because you got other people up here with you. You ain't by yourself. Which I never understood that, uh, Tim, because we're going to die by ourselves and they're going to put you in a casket by yourself. They're going to put you in the grave. They be hollering and screaming. They, they ain't going there with you. I'm telling you that. I never heard nobody say, move over. Let me get in that casket with you. Ain't, that, ain't nobody got that much love. And one of these days, you're going to stand up and face God by yourself. So you might as well walk down and get right with God for yourself. I just want to make sure you have the opportunity. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Let's praise God for what God has done so far. Pastor, Grady and Zion. I would like to introduce to you Serenity James. And she's coming for baptism. Baptism, Serenity. Next, I would like to introduce to you Stephanie Clemente, and she's coming from Second Providence Church by Christian experience. Praise God for her too. <laughs> Ministers Clark, will you extend the right hand of welcome for them? Pastor, not finished. Go ahead, you got one more, okay. <laughs> and Janaya Clemente is coming for baptism. Praise God. Minister Clark, let's go and extend the right hand of welcome to you on a, a bump fist or whatever you want to do that, amen. But the Paul Reeves would greet our new baptism candidate. Ready, yeah. Yazan, welcome. Let's welcome our people. These folk got something to say to you right now. You may be seated there, come get you at the end of the services and get you into our computers. Our deacons are going to come and get us ready for our communion services at this time. Our worship leader is going to be the Reverend Timothy Clark. Lock, lock. 
Lock. Take the C out. Lock. Amen. He happy as a lock. He's going to lead us in our worship at this time. Amen. If you all will stand, please. Amen. Our reading this morning will come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. And you can see it on the screen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let's do it in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Minister of Training, Paul Reeves. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for being so good for who you are. Lord, we come to you at this time, at this moment, right now, just to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing, what you're about to do, and what's yet to come. We thank you for this time, Lord, as we break bread, as we do your instructions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Maybe seated in the presence of the Lord. My very fine deacons are going to come, and they're going to serve you at this time. Some of our Lord and Savior's broken body, likewise his shedded blood. When you take the, blood, uh, the cup, when you break the seal, expose the bread, uh, but do not drink or eat until we all have been served and we will drink or eat together. Communion is about relationships. It's about relationships. The sin in the garden broke relationship. The creative design of God for all of us, for man, is that he blew himself into man so that he could have a relationship. It is out of that relationship that we know how to do relationship. It is out of that oneness with Christ and who restored our oneness with God that we can have oneness with one another. And that is called communion. Jesus wanted them to be sure that they understood that. For as often as you eat of this bread, and you drink of this cup, you're going to show the Lord's death until he returns. Why? Because the death of Jesus Christ paid the penalty to restore a broken relationship. And one of the things that the church of the body of Christ should never be known for is broken relationships. Scripture makes it perfectly clear 
Jesus said a new commandment. And that commandment, I want you to love one another as I have what? Loved you. For this men will know you are my disciples because you love one another. Paul comes back and said, hey, make sure that there are no schisms or divisions in the body of Christ. Because when you do that, you made the death of Christ of none effect. Now you tell me that Jesus died for sin to restore relationship with God and you got husbands can't get along with wives? Jesus died to take away the sin of the world. And you mean to tell me that brothers and sisters can't get along? He died. In spite of what we did. For when we were enemies against him, he died. Communion is more about drinking this juice. And eating this tasteless cracker. Ain't no sugar in it, ain't got no nuts in it, or nothing. Could have had a little chocolate in it. <laughs> Communion is a celebration of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ that makes us to know how to have a relationship with one another. Because of Jesus, I got to have a relationship with Clark for years and years and years. Y'all don't know how well you sit in the office and we talk for hours sometimes. But it was never a cross word. Never a mean spirit. I, I never understood this. I never understood this. Why, why in the world if I got Jesus that's controlling my life and you got Jesus who's controlling your life how come these two Jesuses can't get along I, I never understood that brother P I never understood that why my Jesus got to cuss out your Jesus My Jesus is going to be nasty and ugly with your Jesus. And that's what he meant by he said, if you eat and drink this stuff unworthily. And you got ought and schisms against your brothers and sisters and you have not made the effort to try to obey God and to reconcile those relationships. Then you're eating unworthily. And you're eating damnation unto your own self because now you're lying on God. I don't have nothing against nobody. I ain't mad with nobody about nothing. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let anything be that important to me to be mad with you about. That, that stuff ain't that important to you. How am I be mad with somebody at the church and I ain't got to live with you? I live with you, I ain't got to go home with you, I ain't got to do nothing. So nothing you do is worth of me being angry with you. Nothing to you that God, we can't pray about it and pray for each other. We don't judge each other, we, we intercede. For this cause, many of you are sick. For this cause, you are spiritually weak. And if you keep that little crazy behavior, God will take you completely out of this world. Be careful how you grab this cup. The Bible says if you got an order against your brother, what you do? But no, no, leave the money. Leave the money. <laughs> That's what it says. He said, no, no, you leave the money. 
but go and make that right with your brother and then come back and worship. Some of our Lord and Savior's broken body has he all of it. Could at least have a crunch in it. <laughs> Likewise, it's shedded blood. Let's drink you all of it. As often as you do this, you do show the lost death until he shall come again. Brother Tim. We're going to ask that the people that need to get registered this time we get them registered. Our registration people, our new disciples. Amen. Let's get them in our computers. Hallelujah. Let's praise them on their way out. Let's praise them, please. But Tim? Amen. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of baptism certificates, and uh, anyone from the family can pick those up. Uh, Lashante Walton, are you here today? Amen. Get a Lord of praise. <laughs> Brother Mark Smith. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, we have our new disciples certificate. Only those that names that I call can come, and we ask that you will remain up front. Octavia Freeman. <laughs> Marquia Crawford. <laughs> Jeremy Howard. Victoria McCowan. Takira Scurry. Tony Buford. Priscilla Buford. Clinton Todd Calhoun. <laughs> Pamela Golden. <laughs> Joy Armstrong. And Kim Addison. That is all, Pastor. All right, let's welcome new disciples of GYZ. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Pastor, let me extend you the right hand of welcome to each and every one of you on today. Right hand of fellowship. At this time, our ministers and officers will come. They will do the same thing. Amen. So, Minister Hatcher has a running hug. <laughs> okay, while they're doing that, I want to remind you again on this coming Saturday, our deacons are going to be meeting on this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock. 
And we're going to talk about how deacons strengthen and serve the church. And in um, addition to that, on next Sunday at 1 o'clock, we congratulate Minister in Training Paul Reeves. You'll be doing his initial message on next Sunday at 1 p.m. I want you to please keep that in mind. Then at 5 o'clock that afternoon, to all the ministers, uh, those of you who want to understand more about ministers and ministry, uh, we're going to be meeting here at the church, and that's going to be at 5 p.m. on the 13th. Got a free book for you to all to attend, and the book is entitled, you know, How Do You Put God First? You know, every minister need to know that, need to have a handbook on dealing with that. Deacons got a book on called What Do Deacons Do? That's going to be given at the handout as well. So we want you to keep those, uh, those dates uh, in mind. Amen. With this is church anniversary month, and we're going to ask each and every one of you. Our target goal for this month, you know, we got some building needs. want to thank you so much for all that you have done, that we were able to accomplish a lot of our building needs, and we paid cash for them. We didn't have to buy. And I thank, I thank God for that. Amen. Uh, but we need to get a shelter for these buses. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of money to get them painted and get them redone. If you leave them out in the elements like that, they're going to eventually have an issue. So we need to get a shelter for that. We're asking for, this is the church's birthday. So we're asking you for a special birthday gift. That gift is going to go toward the building needs of this church. I believe in God that's going to give us what we need to do what we have to do. Amen. How many of you believe that today? Amen. How many of you are willing to be an instrument of blessing that God would do? Okay. So I want you to pray about that. Bring your best church anniversary gift, at least a dollar a year. Amen. Uh, don't do like Deacon Cody. He give you a penny for every year you born. Amen. <laughs> I want y'all to do a hundred times better than that. <laughs> but the idea of it, man, we, we want to do this. We want to get this done. We want to get this completed. And we believe in that God's going to give us the resources to do it. And we pray that you're going to help us to get it done. Church anniversary will be on the third Sunday. The 20th, 20th of November, November. On, a on a Sunday at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Hey Amen. We got, what is his name? Bishop? Is it Bishop? You got Bishop, and then we call people right things. Huh? Bishop Gregory Fuller and the church, Macedonian Church of Augusta will be here and be our guest. We're going to ask that you will uh, please. Uh, you don't have to bring cakes and pies and stuff like that this year. Uh, this church is still honoring COVID, and we're still being very careful in how we do things, you know. And so we're just going to wait to the first of the year to go back to normal. But right now, we're asking you just to give an offering that will be able to help. Whatever you're going to spend for a cake, you know, write a check and put on that for cake. And then we don't have to go through what we went through. You know, some of you guys would go through this thing about making sure y'all don't bring nothing, y'all ain't cooked before, and all that kind of stuff. So we make sure that you ever do that. You got memorials, can we give? Who do you get the memorials to? Call the office and give them the okay. If you got a memorial, someone who's passed away between this year and this year, that you would like to have highlighted in the program, you can see Sister Janelle. Uh, she'll be willing to do that. Or... Or uh, enter the deacons, right? Enter the deacons to be able to do that. They get everything together. They ain't got it together. Out of, amen. We we were about that. Amen. So we want you to be able to go ahead and let's get that done. Your late worshiper, give your late offering to our brothers who stand about there to receive uh, your late gifts on today. Amen. Okay, this coming Tuesday is Sandra's birthday. Man, she's just older. I don't know how old she is. Huh? Oh, you got a penny. Okay. 
All right, let's say happy birthday to her right quick. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. It's always good to have another birthday. Yes. Amen. We thank God for that every day. Amen. I am so glad to see, I'm hippopotamus glad to see Brother Barry McCray. Yes. I, <laughs> Barry has gone through knee surgery. Them knees have been giving him a problem. Amen. But we believe that God is a healer. Yes. And uh, God's a healer. He came out to our, our brotherhood uh, thing yesterday. I told him when I talked to him on the phone to listen to his body and to listen to the warden. And that's, that's what he called him. He called his wife the warden. But uh, just glad to see him. Once you point your hands at him, ask God to continue to heal him. Ask God to continue to heal our brother. Continue to move on this path for full recovery. But Lord, we know you're able to do it. And we're calling on you because we know you're able. Thank you if our brother was able to make it today. And Lord, continue to keep him as our prayer. Help him, the Lord, to be obedient to his wife and to her leadership and caring for him and to the doctors as well. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What? Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, is, is, is Yolanda still here? Yolanda Philpott? Okay. There she is. There it is. Our secretary, Yolanda Philpot. You know, she lives in Detroit. She's moving down the Georgia way, but she had to come back here to see us on the day. And we're glad to see you, baby. God bless you. All right. Let's all stand and be dismissed on the day. All right. Don't forget to vote. Please, God, please. If there's ever a critical election, it is the one that's coming up on Tuesday. So we're asking you to please, if you have not voted, get out and vote it. Anybody already voted other than me? You've already voted? Everybody's voted? All right, good. Let's get out and vote. That is so important, man. That is so important. Amen? Lord, it may. Be the last. I said it may. Oh Lord, it may. Be the last. It may. I said it may. Be the last. Say, Lord, it may. Oh Lord, it may be the last. You better be good to each other. It may be the last. I said, I don't know. Oh, I don't. Oh Lord, and I don't. to each other. Be wonderful to each other. Be your best for God. Give your best to the Lord. Because it may be the last time. We don't know. Let's look under heaven and be dismissed. God, we're so grateful for this time together. For now unto him who's able to keep us all from falling. May your grace and mercy continue to sustain us. Hold us and keep us in every good, perfect and wonderful way. We give you the glory and honor that belongs to you now, henceforth, and forever. And the people of God sit together. Amen. 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 And amen.
God bless you. We we'll see you Tuesday on broadcast. Hey, my baby, you all right?